So let's just go ahead and recap and review just a little bit and then take it a little further. And we, uh, we talked many weeks ago that God's commandment is to be fruitful. And then we said that you can't be fruitful until you're seedful. <clears throat> then we went over that you can't be seedful until you get to your core. And then you can't get to your core until you're first peeled. Then you can't be peeled until you want to be. And in the last few weeks, we've been going over that then he's going to plant you because you can't reach your full potential if you're misplaced. And that you are a seed and that you are a good seed. So let me try to wrap a few things up here uh, as we move forward. That uh, God called you to be fruitful and to multiply, okay? And that was the first command given to Adam. Then Jesus comes and says that it's my Father's will that you bear much fruit, John 15, 8. And in this glorify God. So how do you glorify God? You bear much fruit. Then uh, there is only one part of an apple that is fruitful. Only one part that's fruitful. Nothing else about an apple has transformational power. Just one part. So God wants me to be fruitful. So that means I have to find the part in me that has the ability to multiply. So the only thing that has the ability to multiply is the core, which means somebody has got to tear back the peeling, and it takes a lot of peeling sometimes. So some may just look on the outside. You've got to catch this. Catch this. Catch this. Some may just look on the outside and see that it's a little discolored on the peeling. Come on now, somebody get with me on this. A little discolored on the peeling because they're looking on the outside. And they say it's a bad apple because you got a little flaws on the outside, a little discolored on the peeling. They're going to say that's a bad apple, but you haven't even got to the core. <laughs> How can you look at the part that doesn't even have the ability to produce and say it's a bad apple? Have mercy. Lord Jesus, you're just looking at what you can see. You're not going deep into the core trying to say that's a bad apple. How do you know that's a bad apple? Because it got a little bit of bruise on it. Maybe it got a little scarring on it. We all got bruises and scars. Yes, yes. But you hadn't even got to the part of that apple that has life into it. How dare you say that that's not a good apple? And what I found in church is, is that we got a lot of people that don't have enough love, enough patience, and enough tolerance to grab people and help them pull the life that has gotten all over them and the experiences that they've had and the abandonments and the divorces that they've been through and the people that have been unfaithful to them, that have hurt them, and that has surrounded that seed. All that junk that's come around that seed that's in that apple. And church was meant to be a hospital where you could start peeling away all of my pain back. And get down to the part in the side of me that can bear fruit. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you today that I want to pastor a church where I believe that something in the core of you instinctively can change your world. And if you just have the patience to give God the time just to get to your core, look out. Your future is bright. God has a purpose for you. So look at three people and say, Why well, send you? Why well, send you? Amen. Don't miss these classes because, you know, I've not even got started in certain areas because even though we're going in a different direction, 
is still going to be uh, piggybacking off of what uh, we've been teaching. So I just want to help people turn their life around. Amen. Yeah. Me and, me and Miss Kimberly, we just have that anointing. I'm a breaker, she's a bonder, but our whole purpose is to invest in people and help them find, follow, and fulfill their God-given purpose, to tap into the greatness that's each and every one of you, to fulfill the full potential that's planted in every person. So a lot of times, sometimes you'll be like, well, Brother Bobby, I'm going through this. How come you're talking about that? Because I don't want to talk about your this. We're talking about your that. We're trying to give you tools, to put tools in your hands to help you get from point A to point B. Yeah. Because if you get to point B, you're doing good. You're just hanging around point A. We want to speak to the future you. Amen. Lord Amen. Jesus, I don't want to talk about where you're at. I want to talk about where you're going. Yeah. Because God's got a place for you. God's got a plan for you. God's got a purpose for you. Yeah. And we want to speak to that divine purpose that God has planted in every person. Hallelujah. Because it's, it's, it's bad enough not maybe not to know your purpose and not to have your tools in your hand, but it's even worse when your opportunity passes you right on by. And you don't, listen, and you don't even recognize it. Have mercy. It's bad enough to miss it, but it's even worse if you don't even recognize it. So we want to put tools in your hands through the empowering, living, life-giving Word of God that He spells out for each and every one of His children. That's a whosoever thing. Amen. If you're a citizen of the kingdom, it applies to you. So I want to, to help some people who have been so busy, listen, so busy living life, that they, that they never made a life. Oh, yeah, that's, that's post that. You've been so busy living life that you've never even had a chance to make a life. And that's what we're going to do. Amen? In him was life, and life was the light of men. And he came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Not wake up every day having to. But he will give you the desires of your heart, and he will give you your want to. Amen, amen. and amen, because you are good seed, and God wants to plant you. Let's hit this side of it. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18. Let's put the word on it before we talk about it, amen? amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 18. It says, but now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. You're part of the body, and he has set you where he wanted you to be, and that pleases him. So let's talk about this for a minute. When you do go through the process to get to your purpose, you do go through the process to get to your promise. Somewhere along the way, we all do it from time to time, sometimes we will sit back and say, thank you, God, I got this. I know I got this. I know I had trouble back there, and I know I might need you in the future because you are my God. I'm not trying to say I'm self-sufficient in myself, you are my source, but I think, I think I got this one. Look out. Look out. And a lot of times what will happen is that we recognize, all right, Brother Bobby, I heard you. Okay. You know what? Got to be fruitful. I got peeled and everything else. And, you know, I'm a good seed now. And what happens is that we start wanting to plant ourselves. Remember, you can't produce unless you're planted. And God will always plant you in a dark place. You put seeds in a dark place. Babies are conceived in a dark place. Caterpillars gestate into butterflies in a dark place. And a lot of times maybe we don't want to rush into that dark place and so we decide to plant ourselves where we want to plant ourselves. But here's the problem when we plant ourselves. Is that if you are good seed and you plant yourself, you may bear forth fruit. Well, I wasn't expecting that, Brother Bobby. I figured you'd say that, you know, I wasn't going to bear no fruit. Well, fruit's good. 
Scripture didn't say just bear fruit. It said you glorify your Father when you bear forth much, much fruit. fruit. Yeah. <clears throat> and I've seen this over the years where you got good people, they love God. Look, they're not out buck wild in left field somewhere doing something that, that they shouldn't be doing all jacked up, but they get a little off course when they start planting themselves instead of letting God plant them because the Bible says that he set every member one of them in the body as it pleased him. There is a certain place for you. Nobody wants to find a place. They want to find their place. There is a place for you. There's a reason why you're around peg because God has you to be in a round hole. Quit hanging out with the squares. You are never going to, oh, good God, you are never going to fit in a square hole when you're a round peg. He does, look, it's by design. Go to the owner's manual. You got to go to your owner's manual. He's going to talk to you about you in here. Yeah, he's going to talk to him about himself. This is his word. He reveals himself to us. And in that process, you find out about you. This is your mirror. This is your spiritual mirror right here. This is the perfect law of liberty that you look into to find out who you are. You want to know if your hair looks all right? If you want to know if that outfit looks all right, what you going to do? You're going to look in the mirror to see what you look like. Because you can't see yourself without a mirror. You cannot see who you really are without your spiritual mirror. Because what's flesh is flesh and what's spirit is spirit. Yeah. And he will set you where he wants you to be. Do not plant yourself in a place that he hasn't designed for you. Because you will never bear much fruit there. And the problem is, is that we can kind of compromise a little bit and say, well, things are going well and I got over that hump. I got some direction going on. I got some purpose in my life. You know, we're ch -ch 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 chugging along. We're doing all right. And even bear some fruit and not ever fulfill the perfect will for God in our lives. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 said there's a good, there's an acceptable, and then there's the perfect will of God in our life. You know, if you're going to go, go all the way. <laughs> perfect. You know, either go, go all the way or just stay home. The, the, you know, well, I don't know about that, Brother Bobby. Well, my Bible says that, uh, you know, be hot or cold because if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. That's what he said. If you're going to go, go all the way. Be in it to win it. Go all the way with God. Amen. Because what I want to hit is that there's a lot of times that we get frustrated in life and we, we, we try to, help me Holy Spirit, we try to do what God has called us to do, but maybe we've missed it a little bit because to be honest, we, we've kind of done our own thing. Maybe we've been impatient. Maybe we just didn't pray about it long enough and, and we got a warm fuzzy, but it really wasn't f something from God. We just kind of took it that way. So I'm uh, not here to pass judgment or any condemnation because in Christ Jesus there is no condemnation. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that things might not be as full as we think because he said he come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And we see a little here. We see a little. There's a little bit on the vine. So we know we are bearing fruit, but what happened to them great old big huge grapes like they talked about in Israel when they went yeah. and spy out the land and it took two people just to carry some yeah. back on a stick? What, what about them size grapes? Lord, that's the abundant life. What, what's going on? And a lot of times what happens is as you are a particular seed, you for a particular soil. And you, don't, you, you need to get in where you fit in. And what happens is, is that you might be a peach seed. And so you go through the process, you go through the peeling, and you realize after you look into the perfect, perfect law of God, the mirror, his precious word, you start reading and reading, and it starts talking more and more to, it, more to you and everything, and you're like, all right, I'm a peach. I'm supposed to be a peach. I'm going to plant myself. And so you take yourself and you go and you plant yourself in Nebraska. <laughs> and
And so there you are in Nebraska. And you plant yourself. And you're like, I don't know why it's such a struggle, but I'm going to hang in there and I'm going to persevere and I'm not letting go. I'm not backing up, giving up, quitting. I'm just going to go for broke. And years pass and time passes and finally you grow enough to you're starting to see some fruit, but there's, it's little fruit and there's not a lot of it. But you're like, well, praise God, I got some fruit. And this is the point where you start getting frustrated. But the whole thing is, is you are good seed. There was nothing wrong with the seed. There was something wrong with the soil. Glory to God. Because if you'd have planted yourself in Georgia, oh, there ain't nothing like a Georgia peach now. Come on now. You could have planted yourself in Georgia and all of a sudden things wouldn't have been quite so hard and the fruit would have been more often and bigger. Because you planted yourself because there was nothing wrong with the seed. Who Jesus, there was something not quite right with the soil. Because that soil did not have the nutrients that it was not conducive for you. Maybe for somebody else. Maybe you realize that, you know what? I'm an apple. And so you say, I like it down here in Mobile. I think I'm going to plant myself right here in Mobile. And I'm going to be an apple tree. And you plant yourself... And you start growing a little bit, and it always takes time. And it all, Look, it's always going to take time. Amen. It's going to take time. And so you get to the point, same scenario. It's just not budding out, and you're not blooming like you thought you would. But if you'd have just took yourself and planted yourself in Washington, mm, my, 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 all of a sudden you'd have an abundance of fruit. Why? Because that's where the soil is conducive to the seed. Yeah. Oh, Brother Bobby, I'm an orange. I'm going out to West Texas. I like West Texas. Did you hear that? I like West Texas. I like the atmosphere. I like the culture. I like the surroundings. I like the weather. I just like, I like it. You go to God. You know, they need some oranges out in West Texas. So you plant yourself. But yet it never comes to fruition like you thought it would. You never just stayed it to the point where you needed to be because you didn't go into Florida because you are an orange seed and oh, how much more if you would have been in Florida. So I'm here to tell you this morning that you are not a misfit. You just may be misplaced. Lord Jesus. You are a child of the Most High God. You are a good seed. And there is nothing wrong with the seed, but there might be everything wrong with the soil for you. Maybe not for another. Because if you're not an orange, you don't need to be in Florida. But if you are, that's the soil for you. Yeah. Glory to God. You're not, because a lot of times we think, well, we're just a misfit. I must have missed it. I must not just be right. And the whole time you are a round peg hanging around square holes. No wonder you don't fit in. But there's nothing wrong with a round peg. You just got to be hanging out with the round holes. You will fit. You are not a misfit. You are just misplaced. And if we can latch on to that, but here's the hard part. If you have missed it, if you have missed it and you know you're a good seed and you know God puts every, everybody in the bottom as he, as, as he chooses and you're like, I think I'm a little wrong. Here's, here's the problem. We invest so much. This is why it's important, especially growing up as, as you're a kid. Look, an eight, it ain't no problem for an 18-year-old. <laughs> they don't have a mortgage. <laughs> they, don't, they ain't paying on a car. They've not got rooted into a, to a particular job for a long period of time, trying to work their way up and trying to uh, a, a get more out of their job and, and getting all the benefits and everything. They ain't got, uh, well, for the most case, you know, I know there's some exceptions, but, you know, they've not got a whole lot of kids, not built, you know, a, a family for a long period of time. So just to pick it up, move on. All right, I missed it. It's no problem. But why do you do when you got three kids at home? What do you do when your spouse really likes where they're at, but you know it ain't where you're supposed to be now? 
What do you do when you got that house note you got to be paying on? What do you do when, when, you ha when you are in a stable job that's secure and you got to make the car payments? What do you do then? Well, you got to make the decision. Either I'm going to stay in the, 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 the land of just enough or I'm going to pick myself up where God has told me to be. And look, this might not just be geographical either, okay? I'm using a lot of symbolism here. I'm being figurative about a lot of different things. It might not just be geographical, but it's not limited to, to it, but it will also include it too. Yeah. Maybe God's speaking to some of y'all and thinking, yeah, okay, I hear you. Maybe it's not mobile. But maybe it's something, you know, maybe it's not geographical though. But you know that you've got to pick yourself up and if you want the much root, if you want the abundant life, quit trying to hang out with the shoulders when you know you're an elbow. <laughs> God has made you a mouth in the kingdom, yet you always trying to hear everything. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Here you are trying to, trying to see everything that's going on, but God's made you a nose. <laughs> And you wonder why it just ain't clicking. You're not a misfit. You just may be misplaced. There is a place for you. And it's a great and grand and glorious place. There is a there for you. First Kings. Chapter what, Brother Bobby? Exactly. Hold on. First Kings. At least let's get there. Seventeen. First Kings chapter seventeen. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain those years. That's powerful, not even any dew. No dew or rain these years, but according to my word, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, look, because he went to the king, the king's mad. You got to remember, this is not a democracy. It's not like if the king's upset, he's going to sit and talk with the guy about it. There's going to be a, a, a jury, and they're going to discuss things. And, and look, this is what, when you're in... A, uh, when you're in the kingdom, thank you, when you're in the kingdom, the king's word rules. Yeah. In other words, he don't like what you say. <laughs> That's the end of the story. Yeah. That's it. What about my rights? No, you ain't got none. Correct. If he wants you dead, you dead. Just take your land, he takes your land. If he wants to take your kids, he'll take your kids. That's how it worked. And so there's some trouble brewing for Elijah. But look what God does, my Lord. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, Get thee hence and turn thee eastward. Well, I don't like eastward. I don't like the east side. I like it right here. I don't want to do no east side. <laughs> Lord Jesus. And hide thyself by the brook Cherith. I don't like that brook. I like the other one. The waters in the other place I like a little bit better. You know, those waters are just, you know, it's not my thing. You know, to each his own, you know. To each his own. It's all good. I don't like those waters. I think I'll go somewhere else. That is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. there. And that's where we're going to camp out for a second and conclude this for today. You might not like this and you might not like that, but God has a plan for you and God has a place for you. And instead of trying to get on your knees and cry every day, being in such confusion and wanting people to anoint you with all lay hands on you until you ain't got no more hair on your head or whatever the deal may be, if you can just get on God's plan, it's already laid out for you, but you have to get there. It was, everything was already provided for Elijah there. His sustenance was there. His provision was there. Because God has a certain place for you. Yes, 
He has a, you're not a misfit. You might be just misplaced, but if you could ever get to your there, it's already lined up. Now, I'm not trying to say that you're going to have such a, a rosy road and that nothing will ever happen because in this life you shall have tribulation. And it says that if you live godly in Christ Jesus, you shall be persecuted. So it's not saying that the storms ain't going to come in your life, but what I am saying is that your provision is already waiting for you. It's already there, but you have got to go there. If he didn't want to go to the east side, if he didn't want to go to that particular brook, guess what? He'd have been in a bad way. And then I'd have thrown up a prayer to God. Oh, God, I've followed you all these years. I've tried to do what you told me to. I went to church. I read my Bible. I've been praying. I was nice to them even on Airport Boulevard when they cut me off. God, I did good. I didn't say anything ugly. I've been doing good, God. And why am I going through what I'm going through? It's because you're not there. He's already, listen, that's the thing. He's already got it provided for you. There. And when you get there, you find out that I am a square peg and this is my square hole. I am a good seed and this is the conducive soil to produce and bear much fruit to glorify my Father. And anything that you will ever need is already provided for you, but you have just got to get there. Glory be to God. You receive it this morning. I'm just pumped up and preached myself happy as could be this morning. Glory to God. I hope you receive this word. Hope you let it just gestate on the inside of you and really have a salah moment with it and really take it to the Holy Spirit because God has such greatness in you, such purpose and such plans for you. And if you can just know who you are and know where you're supposed to be, Look, a lot of stuff is just going to take care of itself. Amen. Amen.